Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're going to be looking down the microscope and looking at mitosis. Now, the slide I have here is of Ascaris, which is a roundworm. Now it's from the uterus, so we're going to be looking at both meiosis and mitosis. Most of what we're going to be seeing is meiosis. Um, so I believe Ascaris have two chromosomes, um, or no, four chromosomes. So we should see just a small amount of chromosomes. Yes, they have four chromosomes, uh, so they are a round worm. And so we're not going to see a ton like you would see in um, a human cell. So we have 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes, but it's a nice simple representation. I thought about showing a plant cell, but since this is for human anatomy and physio physiology, I wanted to show an eukaryotic cell, just not the same chromosome number, but similar thing. Um, so I wanted to start here just as a reminder of the stages of mitosis. So first stage, stage is actually before the first stage, we're at when the cell is preparing for division or going through its routine. That is called interphase. So I want to find that phase today. Now, as I'm going through this, um, stop and draw each phase on your own. Notice what you're drawing, where the chromosomes are, what the cell looks like, and so forth. Uh, so going from interphase, uh, to prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and finally cytokinesis, labeling where the important things are as we go through this. Uh, because you want to know this because it's important in anatomy and physiology, especially when we get to the reproductive system, which is where we're going through mitosis and meiosis. Cells are constantly dividing. We talk about cancer, uncontrolled cell division, how this is regulated, and so forth. So the yes, mitosis should be a review, uh, but we're going to be talking about it in more detail here. So the normal phase is interphase, and then we go into prophase. Now, prophase can be broken up into early prophase and late prophase. That has a lot to do with the presence or absence of the nuclear envelope, how condensed the DNA is, and where the centrioles are. So this, the centrioles duplicate, and then this little centrosomes move to opposite poles. When they get to opposite poles, that's when we're in late prophase and about to enter metaphase, which is where the chromosomes line up at the middle. And then anaphase is where they are then pulled away from each other. Um, and then for the last phase, we have telophase. So interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, uh, telophase, or I like to call it PMAT. And then telophase, uh, after the cell division occurs, can also be called cytokinesis literally meaning cell separation. So I'm going to leave that over there, and then we're going to look at each one and draw them as we go through. So let's uh, see what we can find now. So right now, like I said, I already have the microscope set up right here, and we're looking at an Ascaris roundworm uterus. I am at, what is it, 100 times magnification right now. Uh, so again, if we were in the laboratory, you would be doing this, finding them on your own, and drawing them. Uh, but we're doing it like this uh, for the sake of of the virus. So I'm, I'm going up to 400 times magnification and I already see something. Uh, that looks like, so right there, I know that writing just got in the way, but right there it looks like anaphase where the cells are moving, right there, those darker pigments right there, those are the chromosomes. So this looks like actually meiosis two of this process. So I see two chromosomes on each side moving away. Uh, so you, now, this is also a specific stain for centrioles. So if I bring the pen back out here, we, and that's why I chose this slide. So right over here is a pair, and then right over here is a pair, and then all these fibers coming out, you can see these centrioles coming out. So right here, they'd be overlapping where they're pushing over each other, and that helps the cell elongate. And so these ones are spindle fibers where they connect, uh, and then you'd also have the ones connected to the chromosomes, of course. Uh, so here we can actually see those centrioles labeled in this, and then you also have some asters coming out the back here, which are kind of cool as well. And so we can see that in these images now, and that we can draw over them and identify them where the centrioles are. And that's one unique thing about uh, the staining for this slide right here. Also, we can see if I draw the outline of the cell right here, there's some pinching going on. Um, let's switch to a different color, pink. What this pinching is doing is this, this ring of actin. So this actin filament is actually pinching this cell, and it's going to split it off into two. That's how the cell separates. So as these move away from each other, this ring splits, gets tighter, tighter, and tighter, and tighter, 
and then it splits the sum. So imagine having a balloon and putting a rubber band in the middle and then just twisting the top of that rubber band, causing the rubber band to get tighter, tighter, and tighter. That's kind of what this actin filament does as it wraps around the cell membrane there. So kind of neat how that works. All right, I'm going to erase all this stuff right here. I'm going to leave the words on the right, though. But we have now found anaphase. I'd call that a good, good enough anaphase for us. Um, ooh, I see another one already. We can also kind of consider that the start of telophase as well. Oop, I just jumped it. Right there. There you are. Let's center it. You guys see which one I'm looking at? This one right here. So this is a great representation of mitosis. Uh, let's switch back to the green color. Mm. Boom, boom, boom. All right, so right here are the centrioles again. And then right here are the chromosomes lined up in the middle. So these spindle fibers will come out, which are microtubules attached to the kinetochores of each chromosome. But this would be the metaphase plate, so to say, right here, or the metaphase line, the line up to the middle. So this would be metaphase. Uh, pretty easy one to identify because you're just looking for them lined up in the middle. Like I said, this does not look like a human cell because we're only looking at a couple of chromosomes. Uh, so in some of these, it's only two going to each side. So the max are four here. All right, so let's erase this one. So we have successfully found uh, anaphase, I mean metaphase and anaphase. So let's zoom back out here now. And okay, so also uh, we can get interphase out of the way. Interphase is just like this one right here. We don't see any condensation, anything going on. Um, actually, maybe not that one. Let's see if we can find one that has uh, a nucleus. So understand that this is a section. So when we take this section, and let's draw a cell over here. So just looking at uh, cytology, when you do this section, remember this is 3D. This section could have happened right there on this cell, and that nucleus was down here. So it never actually cut it. So that's why we see some of these cells are empty, because it cut it right there. Um, or it cut it down here. Or it cut it right on top, and then the chromosomes are right here. So not every section is the same. And here we have a nice lineup in the middle. We could just have a spot right here where imagine that cell flipped, but metaphase lined up in a different direction. So this one over here could very well be metaphase as well. It's just you got to remember this isn't like a textbook. And that's why I want to look at these slides to remind you it's not like a textbook in those pretty images of how everything lines up. We have to kind of look at this and try to spin it. And remember, we're looking at things in 3D. Um, so just wanted to bring that to your attention as well, because it's, it's quite important when looking at these. OK, so let's continue just moving around and see if we can find interphase and prophase. So right here could be a good early prophase. Remember when I said the difference between early and late prophase? So right here, that's that looks like a nucleus. So right there we have a nucleus. And right here is randomly condensed DNA sitting in there. There's no organization, but there's still a nuclear envelope going around. So that could be early prophase. The nuclear envelope still needs to degrade, and then the centrioles still need to get to the opposite poles. So once that nuclear envelope of it degrades, so this is considered prophase um, as well. So same thing with any other form where after the envelope is gone, before they line up in the middle. I don't, whether or not we'll find one, I'm not sure. So it's pretty much just a random arrangement. It looks like another metaphase right there. Uh, this one, this one could be a prophase here. They're still working on getting, so there it looks like a pair of centrioles right there. They should be at opposite sides. So that could be early prophase again. There you can see them at opposite sides. So that was already up uh, metaphase though. This one looks like, uh, it's a weird angle, weird section. Again, and this is what it's like to look at uh, these slides like this. Uh, right here would be an, another, early prophase, it looks like. Let's say this one right here. Let's see if we can adjust the focus just a little bit. There we go. This one could be um, just regular prophase. No nuclear envelope uh, like this one right here. So it's a good comparison between the two. All right, which ones do we need yet? Telophase and cytokinesis. That's mostly just when the cells uh, separate. And so like right here would be a good one. These cells just finished 
separating. So right there, they just separated, and you can kind of still see the chromosomes are still condensed, but right after this happens, the chromosomes are gonna decondense, and then the cell's gonna begin doing what it does. So right here, it finished, separates into two cells, so that would be telophase, and it's the moment they separate is then referred to as cytokinesis. So really, really neat how that works. Um, and then interphase, again, is just when the cell is at its normal dividing state, uh, as a nuclear envelope, and the DNA is decondensed in the middle. Now, since this is from the uterus, these cells are usually just going uh, through the phases, so they might not decondense as much. So it might be harder to find an interphase here, if I'm being honest, just because the cells are more actively dividing and going through each stage. Or s a lot of them uh, probably stall in certain stages, too, until they get their correct signals to go forward. Um, Yeah. So interphase, I think, will be a little bit more harder to find here. So, oh, there's a nice metaphase, though. Look at that one. I know we already saw it. But yeah, if I were to draw uh, interphase, because some of these sections uh, could be slightly weird, too. So if I would draw each of these in as a review, uh, interphase has a nucleus in the middle, and the DNA is equally spread out, decondensed. Early prophase... The nuclear envelope could still be there slightly, but then you start seeing spots. The spots are the chromosomes beginning to condense. Late prophase, nuclear envelope is gone, but the chromosomes are randomly arranged. Metaphase then, the chromosomes are lined up in the middle. So here, they'd be, they'd be double. Let's draw this one correctly here. Boom, boom. And then anaphase, they're moving away from each other. I'm drawing it this way. So here's the centrioles pulling them away. Here, I should draw the centrioles in this one too, connecting to it. And then here, they're trying to move them to the middle and waiting to, this one might not have connected there, and that one might not have connected to the uh, centrosome in that one. In this one, the centrioles would be paired up there. And then finally, we have um, telof telophase and cytokinesis where the actin ring pinches, and then we get the two chromosomes in each cell. Now, this is particular for Ascaris. So I want you to be able to draw that. I was just showing how we can go through this on, you know, looking at them in a slide. And it's like I was talking about with the 3D aspect of this, it's different. And I know we've always looked at these pretty textbook images. So that's why I wanted to show this as the laboratory uh, for this section. And I think. I think it goes well. Oh, there's another cool one. That one's, oh, that one, that one's weird there. Look at this one. Oops. Here, let's see, uh, clear everything. This one kind of like, almost looks like a double nucleus in there. Interesting. I'm not sure what's going on in that one. But yeah, that's all I have for this one. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, definitely reach out to me. But I do want you to draw this on your own. Make sure you have mitosis down, the terminology down, where things are, chromosomes, uh, chromatin, uh, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, because it does become important in anatomy and physiology, especially for when we're talking about the reproductive system. And then we start talking about meiosis one compared to meiosis two. Uh, so we'll, we'll bring this up again once we get there for sure. But so if you have any questions, definitely reach out to me. But if not, I hope you all have a great day and bye-bye. Mm -hmm.